Assalamu alaikum lovely students. In one of our recent videos, we discussed Yersinia pestis. But today, we are talking about Yersinia enterocolitica and Yersinia pseudotuberculosis. Before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcome in the comments section. So, let's get started. Yersinia has got three species, Yersinia pestis, Yersinia enterocolitica, and Yersinia pseudotuberculosis. First, let's start talking about Yersinia enterocolitica. It is a gram-negative rod, which is oval in shape and is larger than Yersinia pestis. It is responsible for causing enterocolitis or Yersiniosis, also appendicitis and mesenteric adenitis. This is how it looks like under the microscope, pink colored because it's gram negative and rod shaped. Now let's have a look at Yersinia pseudotuberculosis. It's also a gram negative rod and is larger than Yersinia pestis and is oval shaped. It is responsible for causing acute gastroenteritis, mesenteric lymphadenitis and far east scarlet fever. This is how it looks like on a culture plate. Its colonies are white and circular. But before talking about Yersinia, Enterocolitica and Pseudotuberculosis in much detail, we should know about the bacteria classification. Bacteria are further classified into spirochetes. They're also classified into acid fast based on acid fast staining. And there's an exception that is Mycoplasma bacterium. Bacteria is also classified based on gram staining into gram positive, we're done with all of them, and gram negative, which are further subdivided into cocci like Neisseria, Neisseria gonorrhoeae, and Neisseria meningitidis, and also into rods, which include aerobic like Pseudomonas, anaerobic like Bacteroides and Fusobacterium, and facultative, which are further subdivided into curves that includes Campylobacter, Helicobacter, and Vibrio, and also into straight, which is further subdivided into enteric and related, that includes E. coli, Enterobacter, Serratia, Klebsella, Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus. Interrespiratory, that includes Haemophilus, Bodytella, Legionella. And lastly, into zoonotic, which includes Brucella, Francisella, Pasteurella, and Yersinia, the topic of today's video. Lecture outline. We are done with the introduction and bacterial classification. Now we'll be looking at their morphology, habitat in transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Morphology, both the Yersinia pestis and Yersinia pseudotuberculosis are rod-shaped. They are pink-colored because they are gram-negative. In this picture, you can see Yersinia intercolitica, which is rod-shaped and pink-colored. Habitate. Humans are its hosts. And there are certain animals that are the hosts of both the organisms, the Yersinia intercolitica and Yersinia pseudotuberculosis. For Enterocolitica, I've got the abbreviation YE. And for Pseudotuberculosis, I've got a YP. So, pork is the host for Yersinia Enterocolitica. That's why I've written YE after it. And dogs, cattle, cats, soil are the hosts for Yersinia Pseudotuberculosis. That's why I've written YP after them. Transmission. These organisms are transmitted to humans by contamination of food with the excreta of domestic animals, such as dogs, cats, and cattle. These organisms are also transmitted by consuming unpasteurized or raw milk, by eating undercooked or raw pork. Pathogenesis. Yersinia infection is associated with two autoimmune diseases, reactive arthritis and Ritter's syndrome. First, let's talk about the pathogenesis of Yersinia intercolitica, and then we'll look at pseudotuberculosis. As its name shows that it is related to gastrointestinal tract because it has got the word entero in it, which is from enteric that is related to intestines. Yersinia intercolitica passes into the stomach and traverses the gut wall, means crosses the gut wall 
and localizes in lymphoid tissue and mesenteric lymph nodes. It has got a virulent plasmid that is known as PYV, which is also involved in the pathogenicity. The bacterium Enterocolitica also produces ureases, the enzymes, which metabolize urea and form ammonia to protect the bacterium from harsh acidic environment of the stomach. Now let's talk about Yersinia pseudotuberculosis. This bacterium requires an enteropathogen. Primary virulence factor is plasmid-encoded protein. The factor causes increased invasiveness. Yersinia pseudotuberculosis survives intracellularly, means inside the cell, and it inhabits and grows in the GI tract. Initially in the pears patches, then spreading to the liver and the spleen through the mesenteric lymph nodes or directly. Clinical finding. Ursinosis presents with symptoms like diarrhea, abdominal pain, vomiting, nausea and fever. Appendicitis also has same symptoms. Gastroenteritis and mesenteric lymphadenitis mimics acute appendicitis. Lab diagnosis. We'll need samples of stool and blood. Yersinia intercolitica is usually isolated from stool specimens. Then we'll go for microscopy. And on gram staining, both the bacteria come to be gram negative because they are pink colored. Culture is performed on McConaughey agar. This is the Yersinia intercolitica's culture. It has got circular, small, white colored colonies. And this is the culture of Yersinia pseudotuberculosis. It also has got white and circular colonies. Other tests, we'll go for CT scan, we'll go for ELISA, the enzyme linked immunosorbent assay, and to distinguish both the bacteria. Yersinia intercolitica can be distinguished from Yersinia pseudotuberculosis by biochemical reactions. Treatment, Yersinosis is usually self-limiting. In cases of bacteremia or abscesses, either trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole or ciprofloxacin is usually effective. In cases of diarrhea, fluid intake is necessary. Prevention. Control contamination of food with animal excreta. Avoid eating contaminated food or drinking contaminated water. All right, everybody, let's have a quick recap. The organisms we discussed today are Yersinia intercolitica and Yersinia pseudotuberculosis. They're responsible for causing Yersinosis, enterocolitis, appendicitis, adenitis, lymphadenitis, Far East Scarlet Fever. They are transmitted by eating contaminated food or water with animal excreta, eating undercooked or raw pork, consuming raw or unpasteurized milk. Hosts are humans, pigs, cats, cattle, and dogs. Diagnosis is based on gram staining microscopy and culture. And for treatment, trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, ciprofloxacin, are used. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. I'd be happy to read them. And also, if you want to connect with me on my social media, I've got my Instagram and Twitter, both with the handle Medzokhrov. And I'll catch you soon in the next video. Till then, assalamu alaikum.